Alright, so as you can see, we're about three kilometers away from the carrier that I was working on the other day in a live stream. And uh, I'm flying, actually I need to cut my throttle entirely for a minute here. I'm flying the K776, I believe it is. Hold on, is there a, where, I, where can I see the name? Yeah, the K667, uh, which is based on a design I saw someone make on the, what do you call it? on the KSP subreddit and I thought it was a neat design so I wanted to make my own version we're coming in way too quick actually um, this is not going to be a successful landing but uh... oops that was pulled up a little too hard there uh... yeah see we're coming in too fast this thing there's no way it can slow down in time so oh shit Well, you can see what happens if I uh, land just short of the carrier. Land, in giant quotation marks, of course. Let's go ahead and revert this to our launch. This time, I will cut the engines at 4 kilometers out, maybe. Um, this doesn't have any form of air brake on it. Obviously, you can uh, change your flight path to brake somewhat, but I don't think we'll get enough uh, air braking out of this design to do that. I'm going to go ahead and lock it to maximum pitch right now and we're gonna see at what point we can get off of the runway I have a very good chance of tail striking and destroying the destroying the engine immediately but I'm gonna guess we can get off at around 40 meters per second yeah so we got pretty close to 40 meters per second I'm gonna go ahead and just go for one-third throttle and see if I can maintain altitude at such a low throttle in fact uh, we're actually dropping our speed too quickly so I can't quite do one-third but maybe we're gonna go a tick above one third. I don't remember these these tick marks. They're basically every what one two three four. There's there's five of them for every third. I don't I can't be bothered to do the math right now. But we are maintaining minimum flight envelope essentially right here. Um, it's a little hard to control, but it is doable. I'm gonna go ahead and select the carrier now. Let's go ahead and get our surface velocity though. Oh, we're, we're actually a lot closer to the runway than I thought. Of course, I did position it six kilometers from these uh, vessels, which you can see the runway itself is a few kilometers long. So, of course, that does factor into it. Yes, this has one piece of landing gear that does not actually go in. That's part of the design, part of the picture that made me like the design. Also, it has the uh, ailerons on the front of the wing, which I just think is super interesting. I'm actually going to throttle down... Uh, to one third because it seems we are uh, we're actually getting a little faster than I need to be. I'm also going to try and keep the altitude uh, around a hundred meters. I'm kind of going up and down a lot. Uh, we're actually picking up quite a bit of speed, um, coming in at an oblique angle as well, which is not so good. Um, I'm going to cut the throttle entirely because we might be coming in again too fast. Uh, we're at least at a lower altitude this time, but we're still coming in quite fast. We're maintaining a lot of momentum. This design is good for gliding, which is, you know, good for gliding, but not so good for landing on a carrier deck. I'm going to go ahead and engage the brakes now because we're going to need as much braking space as we can possibly get. Oh, no! Whoa, so close. All right, pitch up, stall. No, we need to... Well, we at least hit the deck of the carrier this time. Uh, this is also part of why I made the deck out of the, uh, what should we call it, the Mark III cargo bays, because as you can see, uh, crashing that hard into the deck of Mark III cargo bays uh, doesn't, doesn't hurt them at all. So you can crash into the deck as many times as you want. You can have failed landings over and over again. And even if I wasn't reverting the flight, you wouldn't have to worry about it destroying the deck. Third time's the charm, right? Let's go ahead and engage the SAS, get ourselves to the ground altitude. Doesn't make too much of a difference here at this point. Can I? Oh, I can select it from this far away. All right. I'm actually going to keep the throttle up for a bit longer this time and try to kill more speed with maneuvers. Those are some designs that I want to show off in another video. Uh, well, some of them are designs I've already shown off and other designs are newer. Uh, there's also an F-104 Starfighter at the island runway currently. Apologies for the flickering of the ground. I'm going to keep the camera up just a little bit, uh, just in case anyone is watching who that flicker pattern could um, trigger epilepsy, because that would not be good. 
and our speed is getting quite high, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the throttle now. We've got quite a bit to go, but again, this thing does uh, glide rather well. Not sure how quickly I can uh, cut our speed with looping. I'm going to try and just, right now, just do a loop. Full on around. Full on around cuts all of our speed entirely, so I'm going to, I'm turning on the engine again and hopefully going to recover before we hit the ocean. Alright, yeah. Looks like uh, we can very easily get rid of all of our speed by just doing a loop, and of course I could have thro turned the throttle off immediately uh, after doing that full loop. So I'm going to go ahead and get us to around 500 meters or so, and then I'm going to do the same exact maneuver again, this time with power. So we're getting down to 500 meters, going to pull really hard and die. Okay, well we didn't die, but now we know uh, to be a little more careful with rolling on this craft as it can very easily lose control. I'm just going to fly at a higher speed until we get a little closer and go ahead and like I said before, lose speed by uh, doing an ex exaggerated roll. I'm going to go ahead and try that now, just to get a better feel for how the plane reacts. It very, it's, very, uh, it's very unstable on the yaw axis, is what I'm finding. So, especially when doing such an extreme maneuver. It does get us down to speed, down to a lower speed very effectively, but it's uh, very unstable, so that's an issue. You can see we don't have this, we don't have enough uh, yaw control to keep it from falling in a knife edge. Oh, you know what? I don't want locked camera, I want a uh, chase camera. Whoops, I clicked outside of the thing. Alright, we're gonna do over the top. Oh, we have a fairly low G limit Kerbal, I see. No, we're still too high. We're going to need to make another pass. What is my camera doing? Oh, is my chase cam relative to the separation between the carrier and the plane instead of following the carrier's path? Because I swear to God, if it's based on that instead of the plane's path, I am sorry for the flickering. There's nothing I can do about it right this time because I'm trying to maintain... Okay, I'm not going to... The camera, I'm just going to have to... I'm just going to have to deal with. All right. Let's try and get ourselves lined up. Going to go ahead and cut the throttle now. Deploy our landing gear. We're still coming in faster than I'd like to be and from a bad angle, but I'm going to go ahead and at least try and hit the deck. Okay, touchdown, broke a wing, went right off the edge at 22 meters per second. Didn't destroy the carrier, didn't even damage the carrier though. That's a good sign. Obviously we need a longer deck, and we need a uh, better lineup, and preferably even a slower speed if possible. Uh, this craft does fly at a fairly low speed, but uh, there are ways to get things to fly even slower. Alright, lining up for another approach at high speed. Of course I am going to reduce our speed by doing a little maneuver. And I'm also going to nearly make the Kerbal pass out, of course. Going to deploy the landing gear. Going to hopefully pull up in time and drop the throttle as soon as we hit 40 meters per second. Because while that is the roughly minimum takeoff speed, I'm hoping that we can glide her in at an even lower speed. Although it looks like at this point we're just going to fall straight into the ocean. Okay, looks like the minimum glide speed of this plane, you can actually make it glide with a maximum pitch configuration at 24 meters per second. The question is, uh, what throttle do you need to be at for that to function? And I don't know. Alright, coming in for another attempt, one kilometer away, we're gonna pitch up. Nearly caused the Kerbal to pass out again, of course. Gonna throttle down to one-third while finishing our maneuver, actually a little less than one-third going to get ourselves lined up, deploy the landing gear, our, thro our, alt our uh, airspeed was too high there, so I cut the engine entirely. Our airspeed is still a lot higher than I'd like it to be, but right now I'm more interested in actually touching the carrier, which it looks like I'll manage to do, but again I destroy the craft and slide off of it at the end there, so obviously more work needs to be done. Do I have the uh, reaction wheels on? 
they're disabled. Okay, good. Yeah, I like to disable the reaction wheels on my aircraft because, uh, especially on the smaller ones, it gives them more maneuverability than they really should have, and I like to try to keep the, everything on uh, actual requirements of the aerodynamics rather than the overpowered uh, reaction wheels in KSP. For now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this design as is, maybe work on the carrier a little bit more and make it a uh, quote-unquote micro carrier. Also look at some others carrier designs, maybe try them out. I'm not sure about that part. And maybe try to make a much bigger, better carrier if I can think of how to do it. I do have one idea that might work, which is essentially using these plates like I have on the front here, these largest structural panels. These might actually be the second largest. I'm not 100% sure. Trying to use those as a main deck yeah, they're smaller pieces than the large cargo bays I'm using here, but maybe maybe I can make a better functional carrier by having a, uh, a much higher part count, unfortunately, but using those panels as the runway and then having the actual surface area of the carrier that's touching the water uh, be a lot smaller, make it on pontoons. So obviously not as realistic to actual aircraft carriers, but maybe more functional in KSP. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the ground or in the air because I don't go to space very much.